Hi, this is Dr. Brian Misaka, and I'm coming to you from my office in Mililani. And I'm honored to be a part of your small group today. Margie Strako invited me to come and talk to you. I'm assuming that she's the leader of this group, and um, what a wonderful sister you have, you know, full of joy and passion and uh, love for our Lord. So um, let's pray. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for this time that we can um, talk together, think together, um, imagine, and uh, learn, God. And, and I pray that you would use me to, to teach some valuable nuggets that uh, people can take with them and that can actually um, change their lives on some, in some small way, Lord. Um, so use me for your glory. We give you all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I think um, as I thought and thought and thought about this message, um, what I wanted to say to you guys is don't believe that your best years are behind you. Okay, let me say it again. Don't believe that your best years are behind you. Yeah, I imagine many of you are retired by now. And if not, you know, getting closer to that time. And it's easier, right, to slow down and downshift and relax and take it easy. And body kind of wants to do that. Maybe the mind wants to do that. And maybe we're tired of raising the kids, sending them off to college and, you know, maybe watching grandkids now. Um, but don't believe your best years are behind you. Yeah. They still could be in front of you. And the main thing is that God has a purpose for you. Yeah. I'll prove it to you. Ephesians 2.10. Ephesians 2.10. Okay. Where God's workmanship, poema. NLT says masterpiece. Yeah. Poema is where we get the word poem. Yeah, you're God's poem, you're God's handiwork, you're, God, you're God's artwork. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Okay, so his homework, his assignments, his God things for you to do. Doesn't matter what age you are. Moses was like 80 years old when he got called to talk to the most powerful man in the world and say, give me all your slaves so that um, I can take them out. It's God's people. I don't want to take them out of Egypt. Give me all your slaves, all your workforce, your cheap labor. Give them it all to me. And Moses is like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. And he tried to make all kinds of excuses, and God got a little irritated with him. But Eventually, Moses submitted, and he went, and it was a tremendous journey. Yeah, and he ended up opening the Red Sea with God's by God's power and with, with God's help. So I don't think any of you in this group is 80. I don't imagine. If you are, then congratulations. But, um, <laughs> you know, maybe God has a big assignment for you still. Okay, so don't believe that your best years are behind you. Yeah. You can still pursue many things. Yeah. Be proactive. Be proactive. Um, Matthew. In Jesus in uh, Jesus the in the Sermon on the Mount. Yeah, the longest recorded sermon we have. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Seek and you will find. Ask, and it'll be given to you. Knock, and the door will be open. It's this type of verb tense that's ongoing, active, very proactive. Seek, keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. It doesn't matter what age we are. We want to keep on going. Yeah? So keep on going. Be proactive. Don't be passive. Don't let life come at you. You go and make life happen, okay? It's been said there's three types of people. Those who watch things happen. 
those who make things happen and those who wonder what happened. <laughs> okay. And so you want to be the movers and shakers, the ones who make things happen. You can watch things happen. You can wonder what happens too, but try to make things happen in your life. Okay. And one significant area that we can break down, I chose one area today is health. Okay. Our health. And if we think about health, there's many different components to our health. When we get older, we tend to think about our physical health a lot, right? And so I'll get to that one. But let's start with the most important arena, our spiritual health, right? That's the most important arena. And again, if you have more spare time, then um, I really encourage you to use a good chunk of it to study the word of God, to spend time listening to God, to get to know God better, to spend time in creation and appreciate what God has made. Yeah. Many, many, many different ways to understand God more, to get to know God better. Yeah. So health, the first aspect, spiritual health. Yeah. That's the most important in our life, our spiritual well-being. Yeah. Evangelism. Learn about how to share your faith. Yeah. Fulfilling the Great Commission to go. Yeah. So you can evaluate your own spiritual health. Let me give you a few questions. Are you growing in your relationship with God? Okay, just think about that for a second. Am I really growing? in my relationship with God. What number would I give it on a scale of zero through 10? Yeah. Five is okay. One is very, very poor. 10 is incredible. Yeah. And if you're a six, what were you last year? What were you last month? What were you yesterday? Try to go to six and a half, try to go to seven. Try to make it a little bit better, but try to go on an upward path, upward pathway in your relationship with God. Okay? Are you actively learning something about God or the Bible or biblical principles? Are you actively learning? And if not, find a pathway, seek a pathway, ask around. Yeah, and there's going to be lots of people that will give you Many different forms of guidance in this one. Real simple one. I think it was mentioned at church the other day. The Bible Project. The Bible Project is an excellent, excellent resource on YouTube. And if you don't know how to access YouTube, uh, Margie had to access to get this video today. And um, But uh, the Bible Project is on YouTube. And it's like animated. And it's short. And you can learn a ton, a ton of stuff on this YouTube channel, The Bible Project. Okay. So first aspect of health. Yeah. Keep seeking to grow and learn and develop your spiritual health. Second aspect, relational health. And this is one Margie mentioned that she wanted me to talk about. And this one is for you, Margie. Okay. Community, connection. Fellowship, um, if I were to summarize um, our meaning and purpose in life in one word, I would say relationships. Relationships, that's our meaning and purpose in life. In a couple of words, loving relationships. And a sentence, having loving relationships with God, others, and ourselves. God, others, self, right? Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah? So all part of spiritual health and, in this case, relational health. Yeah? And focusing on the horizontal, you want to have relationships where you can be connected, where you can be authentic, where you can be yourself, where you can be feel a sense of belonging, where you can feel um, accepted as you are, yeah? And if you have good fellowship, 
you're very blessed. Yeah. If you don't have good fellowship, seek it out. If you've sought it out for years and years and years and you always run into snags, then be honest, be humble and look at yourself and go, is there something about me that I need to develop so that I can have better relationships? Yeah. Some questions in the relational health realm. Are you connecting with others in an authentic, vulnerable, iron sharpens iron way? Yeah. If you can be vulnerable with people, they can be vulnerable with you. It's a very good sign. It's a very good sign that you have some good, healthy, deeper relationships there. Yeah. Another question, are you encouraging others? Yeah. Are you an encouraging person or you tend to be more negative? Uh, complaining, are you encouraging? Yeah. Encouragement is a skill that you can learn. Yeah. Are you empathetic? Can you understand where others are coming from? It's a great, great skill. Yeah. That I always try to address in my counseling sessions, therapy sessions. If you're empathetic, you're understanding, odds are that people are going to be more understanding with you also. Yeah, so empathy, great, great skill to have. Yeah, if um, you don't have deeper relationships, do you smile at others? Do you greet them? Do you make attempts? Yeah, uh, do you reach out to others? Yeah, never give up. Yeah, there's always hope. There's always um, things you can learn about the relational realm, okay? Do you have problems saying no to people? Or is it difficult for you to, to say no? You always say yes. It's hard for you to resist um, strong personalities. Um, there's a book called Boundaries by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. They were my former bosses. Excellent, excellent teachers, Christian psychologists. Um, Henry Cloud is, is, is on... Um, that service that we have. Um, I can't think of it. <laughs> that, that, that service that we have. I'll, I'll come, I'll think of it. But the subscription that the church subscribes to, it's on, Right Now Media, Right Now Media. Um, Henry Cloud is on Right Now Media. And um, excellent, it's free. It's free to everyone. You can contact Rich Fuel if you need access to right now media. Yeah, the church um, pays a chunk of money to get a subscription so you can have it for free. And again, Henry Cloud, like cloud in the sky, C-L-O-U-D, excellent teacher. He's also on YouTube, as is John Townsend, Townsend, T-O-W-S-E-N-D. Excellent, excellent, great guys, okay? So your spiritual health, seek out greater spiritual health. Your relational health, Evaluate your relationships, make them better. Yeah, enjoy them. Enjoy laughing, fellowshipping, going deep with other people. Your emotional health. Yeah, this is the one I kind of spend a lot of time with people on, and people come to me. All of these areas of health, relational and the emotional, they're all interconnected. Do you have unresolved hurts? Do you have bitterness or grudges against anyone? Do you need to grieve a loss? Do you have emotional peace inside of you? Are you depressed? Are you anxious? Are you obsess about things? If so, seek answers. Be proactive. Yeah, be proactive. Learn, grow. Um, lots and lots and lots of resources in this realm. Yeah, again, Townsend and Cloud. Cloud Townsend are excellent authors of Christian books. Um, two of the best at integrating psychology and Christianity. Yeah, so I would seek answers. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to cope with stress, a lot of ways to cope with anxiety. There's different ways to transform your mind for um, negative thinking. People get depressed and they get really negative. There's lots of stuff here. Yeah. So be honest with yourself. Again, humble yourself and say, if I struggle with something, I've never resolved something, 
yeah, go get help. Go seek a counselor. Yeah. Um, you can call me and I can direct you to somebody if you want. Um, I'm full right now. So this is not a <laughs> advertisement for me. But um, um, my good buddy, Mark Hovland, he heads up New Hope Counseling Center. H-O-V-L-A-N-D. He's all full now too. But um, you can always get on a waiting list. Yeah. So um, seek out help if you need help in any of those arenas. Physical health. Okay, like I said, when we get older, we'll wrap up with this one. Physical health. When we get old, we get all kinds of aches and pains. Things don't work anymore. Things sag. Things, don't, you know, my memory doesn't work anymore sometimes. <laughs> so uh, this one... I've gotten more and more interested in over the years because I have a little arthritis. I've had broken bones, memory problems, I, you know, all kinds of stuff going on with the body. Yeah. Cause I like to try to stay active and then, you know, things break down and stuff. So highly encourage you to um, be active. Yeah. Be active exercise um if you don't want if you, there's no sports that you can play just walk stretch there's like holy yoga yeah and very good for you very good for your circulation stretching your muscles out breathing yeah learning the physical breathing yeah there's this thing called emotional freedom technique tapping yeah um, the East has a lot to offer. Yeah. And people are afraid to delve into things from the East because they think um, the spiritual roots are, are dark. But I think anything can be redeemed for Jesus. Yeah. They would, Christians would eat meat sacrificed to idols. <laughs> and as long as you didn't have conscience, uh, your conscience didn't bother you about that that it was perfectly fine with God. But the stipulation in that one was if it causes somebody to stumble, don't do that in front of them. Yeah, in your own house, in the privacy of your own house. Go ahead, eat the cheaper meat offered to idols. Yeah, and so um, similar in this stuff. Yeah, use anything for God's glory Pray before you do it. Don't open yourself to any other spirits. And don't, don't worry. It's it's God's body, God's creation. And these people have just discovered things about it. And uh, Western medicine is just catching up. Yeah. Um, learn about your body. Learn about your brain. That's where I've been going recently. Um, this book, The Brain's Way of Healing by dr norman deutsch i think he's jewish it's not a christian book but um it's about neuroplasticity and you can always add jesus because god is the one who made the brain in the first place okay so the brain is like this computer that i'm recording this video on your mind is the one that interacts with the computer and programs it and puts the apps that you want and opens up all the different functions but the mind interfaces interface, with the brain, interacts, yeah? And so you can actually shape your own brain. Yeah, Caroline Leaf, we went over that, I don't know how many years ago, six, seven years ago. Switch on your brain, Caroline Leaf. Excellent Christian book, yeah? So if you want it from a Christian perspective, excellent, yeah? Caroline Leaf, yeah? If you can tolerate a uh, uh, non-Christian perspective, but amazing this one talks about dealing with chronic pain it talks about red light therapy we have our own nam collins um and uh it's amazing stuff how the brain can change itself yeah and how our minds can interact on that exercise increases neurons learning new things increases your brain cells Incredible stuff. You learn more and more about God. Those neurons wire together because they fire together. And you learn more and more and more about God. And you change your brain. 
and you set your mind on Christ. Yeah. So excellent book to reference. Another one, Mark Hovland, my good buddy, used to be a pastor at New Hope, uh, recommended this one. He gave it to me. He even signed it. And he gave it to me. And I said, thank you, Mark. And then I just put it on the shelf. <laughs> and maybe six months to a year later, I finally picked it up and said, oh, let me just look at what Mark gave me. I started reading it. I got it on Audible, uh, where you can listen to it. And it blew my mind. It changed my life. Yeah. And um, on the cover here, broccoli, cruciferous, cruciferous vegetables, cauliflower, broccoli. It's so good for you. This is super antioxidant called glutathione. Glutathione. I never heard about glutathione. Glue what? Glue this on your thigh? Glutathione? What? It's the mother of all anti antioxidants. And I never heard of it till I read Dr. Mark Hyman's book. Yeah, like 99% of people are deficient in omega-3s, fish oil. 60% of your brain, DHA, 60% of your brain. It's like fatty acids. Yeah, so I take two big fat pills, 2,000 grams of fish oil every day. I have flaxseed, I... Um, have this protein powder with all this organic stuff, blueberries, superfoods, yeah, purple, um, deep colors. I eat spinach, make this smoothie every day, and take all these supplements. Yeah, vitamin B complex helps um, boost your energy, mitochondria. The red light therapy helps with mitochondria. Okay, so there's all this stuff that science is discovering about this amazing body that God made. And it's good to read about it, good to learn about it, share it with each other, and um, be healthy, take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is our bodies. Yeah, it's all integrated, so cool. So thank you for letting me come into your living room today and talk to you guys. Yeah. Again, God's not done with you yet. Yeah, God has plans for you. Ephesians 2.10. Focus on the different aspects of your health, your relationship with God, your spiritual health, yeah, your relationship with others, yeah, relational health, emotional health, internal, intrapsychic, and your physical health. It's all connected. Everything connects with everything else. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, let's pray together. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the modern technology we have that I could just record myself and uh, put it on the internet and my brothers and sisters could access it on YouTube and watch it for free when they want to. And hopefully uh, I've said something that's valuable for them to take with them. And I do hope and pray that they would be proactive in seeking out your will and what you have planned ahead of time for them, assignments, God things, like Pastor Mike says, um, God things for them to do for your glory. Thank you so much. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. Take care now. Bye-bye.